Welcome Naresha Technologies, this is Mahesh. So in this video series I am explaining, I'm giving an overview on Kotlin, Kotlin syntax. Okay. Now previous videos uh, I explained what is Kotlin, how to create variables, methods, constructor and how to create a class and in, an interface we discussed in the last class we discussed. In this video I will explain you uh, one important uh, control flow statement in Kotlin, uh, one is nothing but, I mean the control flow statements we are having like if, if else, while, to while, for loop, those will be same. Additionally in Kotlin, uh, we are having one, a new control flow statement we are having that is a when. So when is the replacement of switch? So in this video, I uh, will explain you what is a when keyword in Kotlin and what is the ranges in Kotlin, okay? And we will discuss about the for in loop we will discuss. In this video series, we will discuss about the these three concepts we'll discuss in the Kotlin: when, ranges, and foreign. So let's see here first when condition. Uh, if you observe the switch condition syntax, if you observe here, we'll specify switch. We'll give some either the type we'll specify as an input parameter, the data type, like int or string or float or double. The type we'll specify as give as an input for the switch. Next after that we'll write a case. We'll write like this: the case is equals with and uh, the case is equals with this. You write some statement, we will write the next thing next, next after that we had to write a, a break statement we had to write, right? Like this we are going to write a switch condition we are going to write. If case is x, do this. If case is y, do this. And we had to write a break, break statement we had to write. Like this we had to write the multiple conditions we had to write in the switch case. But in Kotlin, we do not have a switch. Instead of switch, we are having a when we are having. So let us see how to use the when. A simple example I am taking to demonstrate this when condition, create a new project, given a project name called when test is a project name I given, this at C, create one new Kotlin file, test is a file name I specified. We want to run this, let us create a main function, create a main function I created. I want to take input from the user, let us take for example, a var. I am taking input from the user called day index. I am taking what? The day index I am taking as input from the user. Like user has to enter, Sunday means 1, Monday means 2 like that, user has to enter, the day index user has to enter. So I want to take input from the user. In the earlier classes we seen that, call the read line method to take input from the user. Read line dot, but read line directly will give the string type of data if you want to convert into integer type dot to int method. A read line method dot to int method will get the data in the form of integer type. Initially, the read line method is the variable is declared as a null initially. So we have to specify not null. So we are telling that the method will not return the null type. So that's why we added the not not null operator. We added. You are going to get the day index. You are going to get uh, from the user. We are getting the day index. We are getting. If day is one, you have to print. I want to print Monday. I want to print. If day is two, I want to print. The Sunday like that, I want to print the messages. Simply we will add a when condition, we will add when. What is the input parameter for this? I am taking the day index, I am taking as the input parameter for this. I am using the when condition, I am using the input parameter for this. When, in, when is what? The day index is the input parameter for this. I can write multiple, you do not require to write any case statement, you do not require to write any break statement. Directly you can write if the input is 1, what do you want to perform? Print. I want to print a message, let us take specifying today is Sunday, that is it. We do not require to write any case, we do not require to write any break statement. Like this directly you can execute the statements, you can execute directly. The case is 2, case is 3. So taken from 1 to 7 we taken, okay, taking the values from 1 to 7. What about if any user is given apart from these values? If user is given 1 to 7, okay, we are printing based on that value, we will print these messages, we will print. What in case of if user is given except this 1 to 9? Then you can write else condition, you can write at that time. You can write a else condition, you can write some default message you can print, like please provide input 
between 1 to 7, okay. You do not require to write the switch state, I mean the case statements, you do not require to write the break statements, let us say a replacement of switch statement, the when statement. You can see here, let us run the application and see the output. It is waiting for our input. Let us take again the input, for example, today is Friday, I specified 6 again. 6, you are going to get the message today is what? Friday. The when statement is called and this particular condition is satisfied, it is printing the message called today is what? Friday, okay. So, the code is going to optimize a lot if you use this, the when condition. One more thing is, uh, this statement we can use in case of if you are having only one statement if you are executing. If you are executing any only one statement, if you are executing, you can write the syntax like this, you can write. For example, multiple statements if you want to execute in the when condition, like for example, if the user given input is 7, I want to print today is Saturday and enjoy the weekend, I want to print, I want to display that message, I want to print. I want to print two print of state, two print and statements I want to write here, today is Saturday, enjoy the weekend, two different statements. So, two print, print statements I want to write here. So, will it accept? See here, I want to write one more print statement I want to write here. Is it accepting? No, right? We can write only one condition, you can write. Okay, let us take, let us end with semicolon. I am adding one more statement I am adding here itself. We are unable to execute. One statement if you want to execute, uh, you can write directly, you can write like this, you can write, put an arrow and you can execute the statement. If it is only one, one thing. If you want to execute multiple statements, if you want to execute, simply you can specify opening and closing flower bracket, you can specify. Inside that you can write the statements, you can write. So, one statement if you want to execute, directly you can write the statement. A more than one statement if you want to execute, a specify opening and closing of the flower bracket and you can write the multiple statements, you can write. Now, let us see here. Let us run the application and see the output. You can specify. For example, 7 I entered. I got a message today is Saturday and enjoy the weekend we got, right. This is a one thing, a when statement, okay. The next thing is nothing but, it is a replacement of switch statement, ranges. What is with this ranges is nothing but, let us take the ranges we are going to represent with this, with the two dots we are going to represent the range. Like you want to get the values you want to get from 1 to 100, you can specify 1, you can write up to 100. So, now you are going to get the values from 1 to 100, you are going to get the values you are going to get. Let us see for example, removing this when condition and even you can use range, range you can use in when also we use. Let us see first, we use a range we will see first. For example, I specified var values is equals to, I specified from 1 to 100 I specified. We are creating one variable we are creating called values, we specified 1 to 100 we specified. I am printing this value, so I am printing, print ln of, we can write values. Let us see what it is going to print. We are using the range we are using from 1 to 100, we stored that, the range we stored into one variable we stored called values, we are printing that reference, we are printing here, we got 1 to 100, right. Okay, let us take for example, I am creating one for loop I am creating. Uh, in Kotlin, we are going to create a for in loop we are going to use. Let us take for example, for I specified x in 1 to 100 I specified. Now, see here earlier we got just 1 to 100, right. But now let us see here, we specified for x in 1 to 100 I specified. Now, this loop is going to repeat for how many times the loop is going to repeat is, the loop is going to repeat for 100 times the loop is repeat. And you are going to get the value you are going to get. Initially, x value will be 1, 2, 3, 4, like that you are going to get the values you are going to get up to 100 you are going to get the values. If you want, you can see here, print, print, just print the x value. So, like for each method, we are having enhanced for loop in case of Java. In Kotlin, uh, in Kotlin, we are having a for in method. You can specify any name, you can specify as a reference, in, next after that, you can specify some range or it can be array or it can be collection. How many elements you specified, that many times the loop is going to repeat for that many times. So, let us see here, let us run this application and see the output. Now, you can see here, we got the values we got, we are using print method, that is why we got all in one line. I am using println now, let us see. Earlier using the print method, now I am using the println method I am using. So, you are going to get in a separate row you are going to get. So, you got 1, 2, 3, 4 like that, we got up to 100 we got. Elements we got up to 100, we got the elements we got, okay. So, even this range is having, uh, 
let's take for example now we are reading in a sequence from 1 to 100 okay there is a property called step is on property is there like you want to jump to two numbers you want to jump you can specify step 2 you can specify step 2 i specified let's see what will happen now now what will happen is nothing but it's going to jump two to numbers earlier you got a sequence we got from 1 to 100 now we specified step now you can see here we got 1 the next after that directly we got 3 5 7 so 9 13 like that we got the two to numbers we are skipping okay 97 directly we got 99 we got like this okay so here there are few properties are there like step to down to like these kind of properties are there like for example i specified you want to get in reverse you want to get let's do one thing there will be a property call i specified 100 to 1 there will be one more property is there same like the step 2 so check once uh, same like step property you can find one more thing you can find called down to you can find one more thing now if you try for example 100 to 1 but i hope it will not work let's see you want to get the elements from 100 to 1 now no we have not got so we have to specify here called range so check once there is a same like step we are having a property called down properties also there we can we can downgrade the values from 100 to 1 you can downgrade the values okay so this is about how to use a when statement and the range operator and next thing is nothing but the foreign method for reading the elements from the array or collection or range in kotlin we are going to use the foreign method we are going to use okay so try to work on this up to this in the next video uh, i'll explain you how to create an array of elements how to create collections in kotlin okay thank you mm -hmm.